Hello, good evening. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutin. And you're watching Consider This. Today on the show, we have Ganesh Kumar Banga, who is the champion for the ICT Productivity Nexus, which is one of nine areas of focus under the Malaysia Productivity Blueprint, which was launched back in May of 2017. So the idea is to raise labour productivity, make it easier for businesses to do business here in Malaysia. Welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. So let's set the scene a little bit and why don't you tell us uh, precisely what your role is as champion sure. for the ICT uh, Productivity Nexus. Sure. So my role as champion of the ICT Productivity Nexus is to increase the productivity uh, of the IT industry uh, here in Malaysia. But even more than that, the IT industry today is not an industry on its own, but it's also an enabler to other industries. Mm. So we also look at how our industry can also help the other industries also increase their productivity by adopting ICT. Right. Because, I mean, everything is technology-linked yes. right now. It's really yes. hard for it to be one nexus by right. itself. Right. And, and if you actually look at what's needed to increase productivity, technology is a key component, right? Sure. right. So what specifically are we looking at when you talk about the sector? I mean, who are the key players? Uh, you know, and, and so give us a granular sense mm of the sector that you kind of sure. bringing together in order to push this agenda sure. forward? So the IT industry basically uh, encompasses a number of different components. You have the industry itself, which are basically the enablers. Okay. So if you look at the technology enablers, you have the software, the hardware, the system integrators that put everything together, right? And of, ten, of course, then you have the academia, mm. we generate the talent, which is also key for our industry. Mm. Right, that can actually then provide these technologies to the users. Okay. Right. So you have the vendors, the users, and the academy that provides the talent. Uh, so that would be the ecosystem. <coughs> yes. Right. And and when we're thinking about making sure that you know the productivity is maximized or to increase sure. the uh, productivity of this uh, of of ICT. Sure. Um, what are the challenge areas? What are the pain point areas? You mentioned uh, talent is one area where you're sure. looking at coming sure. up from academia, right? Sure. What else are we So I think at? the Malaysian Productivity Blueprint actually identified four key issues, mm. right? And, you, and that those four issues can be broken up to three key areas. The first is talent. As many people know, in this industry, there's a huge mismatch between the talent produced in the universities versus the talent that is actually needed by the industry. And a big reason for this is not really because the universities are not producing or don't know what to produce or don't know the kind of talent to produce, but it's because our industry just changes so fast. Can you give us an example of So what for kind example, of if you look at Industry 4.0 today, how many of our talent coming out of universities actually understand how to implement IR 4.0? Right, so by the time they come out of university, the syllabus that they're actually learning in university could be four or five years old. Right. By the time they come out, what they learn is already out of date. Mm. Yeah. Right? But I would have thought that you know, when, you, when you go to university, you are trained to have the capacity to take on new knowledge. I mean, to continually look at what the industry is producing and you, have the, you already have, as it were, the grammar for it. So it's just extending that. And you, you continue learning, no, right? No, you are yeah. right because, for example, people talk about AI being something new. But if you actually look at the <coughs> computer science textbooks, the word AI has been around for 20, 30 years. Right. It's just the application of it today is different. The issue today is for the talent coming out of universities today to implement these new applications. There's still a bit of reskilling that they actually need to go through. Okay. So that talent mismatch, right, or skills mismatch, is what we are also is one of the issues identified under the Malaysian Productivity Blueprint. Right. Considering the, the nature of, say, technology and innovation, sure. right? if it's going at breakneck speed and universities can't keep up because universities are slightly sure. more moribund, they're thinking curriculum and sure. they maybe have to you know, have some bureaucrat, sure. you know, kind sure. of uh, certify that. Uh, then where can that dynamic uh, sure. be injected in terms of the education system? Is it industry that's going to be providing the hands-on, the training necessary? Sure. You take the university students, but then you, you actually educate yes, them again. Yes, industry is a key part of it. At the same time, yeah. there are also tools and applications that the, the talent themselves need to adopt. Lifelong learning is now right. a key word. You can't just learn... Whatever you learn in university, by the time you come out, as I mentioned earlier, it's out of date. Lifelong learning, micro-learning, 
today there are apps where you can learn small bits or pieces every day as you go to work and over one year you basically learn a whole new technology a whole new application so just to follow up uh, on Sharad's question yeah. then if you are looking to correct that mismatch yeah. I mean first of all whose role would that be and how sure. do you even go about correcting such a I mean, it's, it's almost nuanced and it's ever-changing, right? It's ever going to be changing what sure. industry needs and what sure. academia puts out. Sure. So because it is a, the talent issue affects productivity, mm. the ICT Nexus has a role to play in terms of improving that productivity. That doesn't mean that we're doing the training. I see. Right? So we look at platforms, mm. for example. I'll give you one example. India actually launched Nexus Skills also, or they launched uh, skills, Future Skills actually in India. And what Future Skills did was actually they provide a platform that matches the talent together and also provides lifelong learning applications with AI. Right? So they know what you learn or what your knowledge is by asking you a set of questions, then provide you the syllabuses that can help you grow. So it's stuff like that that we look at. Okay. Uh, some interesting uh, ways in which we do things in Malaysia, a lot of yeah. initiatives come from government. Uh, yes. which is not necessarily true in uh, the advanced uh, industrial world, right? Uh, mm. It's usually privately led uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, do you think we have the balance right here? Uh, you know, is government too, uh, too uh, dominant? Uh, sure. Is the private sector always waiting for government's handouts and, you know, sure. and signals? I mean, what, what do so you think the, the balance is like? The ICT nexus is driven by the private sector. The government actually comes in to help facilitate what the private sector needs. That's why as champion of the ICT Nexus, I represent the industry and I'm also the chairman of PCOM, the National Tech Association of Malaysia. So we represent our members. We hear from our members what they need mm. and bring it up to the Nexus as well. Can, can I uh, just get you to explain sure. what is it that you're hearing from these, from your members? From What, what so, are you hearing from the ground? What is it they need? Sure. So I think, look, we are blessed in Malaysia for the last 20 years, we've had a lot of incentives for our industry. Right? Ever since the Multimedia Super Corridor came about, we had a whole suite of incentives, both fiscal and non-fiscal, to help the industry. In the current budget, there's also been a lot of focus sure. on the digital economy as well. Mm. But one of the issues we see is that a lot of the incentives today are actually funding-based incentives and not application-based incentives. Now, you may ask what is funding-based incentives or application-based incentives. I'll give you one example, our Industry Forward initiative, the Industry 4.0 initiative. We've got, I think the government has allocated 3 billion ringgit to help fund IR 4.0. Uh, it's under bank pembangunan, this mm -hmm. one application. But you see, if you put a 3 billion dollar fund in, in a bank, they'll give out ticket sizes of 10 to 20 million ringgit loans so if you look at 10 to 20 million ringgit loans for implementing ir 4.0 the smes can adopt that it's really the big company okay so what about the smes right and you know our economy is driven by smes now if you then look at the smes and ask them whether they want to adopt ir 4.0 or ai or digitalization today because they know if they don't adopt digitalization they'll be sure. out of business they want to adopt it but the issue is they don't know how. Okay, well let's come back and discuss sure. about how we can bridge that knowledge gap. Uh, we'll be back with more on Consider This. Make sure you stay tuned.